Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how we built this beautiful shed from Forest Garden. This is the Better Shed from Forest Garden and it's from the Epping range of pressure treated sheds. We had a lot of fun building this and I hope you enjoy the video. So our shed delivery has just arrived by Forest Garden who very kindly um, gifted us this shed today and we're going to try and get it through our very narrow Victorian terrace house. Uh, I'll just show you where it needs to come through. Dun dun dun! The smallest hallway in the world. <laughs> behind me that the shed has come in lots of little pieces which has made it so easy to get through our tiny tiny Victorian terrace house which is just brilliant look at this right it's time for us to try and put the shed together now and uh, our last experience of putting a shed together did not go to plan Hopefully this time we've got some really nice, easy, clear instructions to follow. So fingers crossed this time it goes a bit better. Can't go any worse to be honest. So we're going to lay our shed base straight onto the soil, onto the ground. And we can do this because the base has been penetrated with anti-rot treatment which makes it ideal for ground contact. Just remember to build it on a flat surface to avoid warping. So we're just drilling pilot holes around the base and then putting the screws in after the pilot hole um, so that, in Dave's words, the screw doesn't make a funny sound. Is that right, Dave? Yeah, yeah. So here's Emma. Don't really know what she's doing. She's just dancing among well the shed. A a oh, exercise, of course, exercise of course. Until you get the shed on it? Yeah. Don't worry, I've got it. Don't yeah. worry. Oh, do you need help? No, 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 it's fine, fine. Okay. Right, here's the shed floor going on to the shed base. <laughs> I think so far the most stressful thing of building this shed has just been like me trying to get it in the right position, but everything else so far is just so simple because it comes in so many different parts. Um, it's like putting together a giant jigsaw puzzle, so. Right, <laughs> so this is the back panel. So what they suggest that we do is lay out all the pieces around the shed to know where we're gonna put them all. We haven't but got room for that. We haven't got room for that, so. Um, it, it says to start with the back of the shed, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to get the back corner done. That was easy. I just want to show you one thing about these sides of the shed um, that we're finding really, really useful. So when you're trying to line one of these up, you can see here, this goes over here, but then you've got a bit of an overlap there. So it's really easy to get it exactly where it's supposed to go. Um, when you're trying to line it up, which we're just finding really, really useful, aren't we? Yeah. Because otherwise we'd be faffing about for ages trying to get the thing completely lined up. But because of this, it's just so, so easy just to put together, so. Right, our next decision is to decide the where the window is going to go. You think the front? Because you'd be able to easy reach it. What's the point of having the window anyway? You need to put stuff in there, right? No, I thought it was just to let some light in the shed and have a little window box in, the in it. Just put it in the middle. I was yeah. going to put it in the middle, but you can yeah. see these three panels here, these are interchangeable. So you can have the window in the middle, at the back or at the front, depending on what your preference is. I'm going to say middle, because I think it's nice and neat. Yeah. Have a little window box on it. I think middle. shed is built. We're just putting these um, strips of wood on which um, give extra strength and protection to the shed so they're kind of a structural thing to keep it really really sturdy and it's just these little strips of wood and they just go on to all the corners and anywhere where you've joined panels together and give an extra strength to the shed. Mm -hmm. 
right, debate number 500 that Dave and I have had over the shed is which way we want the door to open because the shed has got so many interchangeable pieces you can choose, literally choose where you want the window, where you want the panels which way you want the door to open so after much debate on this subject we have decided that it's going to open so that it goes towards the fence and once you've made your decision you have to have made your decision because you've got to start putting these wooden battens on which then determine where the hinges go so we're now on the hinges which we dread don't we Dave mm -hmm. hinges and doors are just the thing that we struggle with so hopefully the instructions make it nice and easy for us You can see that Forest Garden are giving a really, really clear diagram here. It's exactly where the hinges have to go and the direction that they have to be pointing in because it is so complicated sometimes. But look, they've got three diagrams really, really close up. So it's really helpful. <laughs> we put the door on and it didn't go wrong. <laughs> It's an exciting moment when the roof goes on because the shed finally started to look like an actual shed. With the roof felt we just rolled it out on the grass, measured it halfway and cut across at the halfway mark and then pop it onto the shed and tack it in place. I think it's worth taking just a little bit of time to get things like this um, perfect on the shed especially when it's in your back garden and you want it to look nice so I'm just gonna like shuffle it about a bit until I'm happy and then I'm gonna tack it on. Right, the shed is finally up, looking really good. You might have noticed the door is swinging open. I haven't put the door hinges on it yet. I mean the clasper thing because it's time to paint it. We're going to paint the shed and I've been very kindly gifted some paint by Thorn Down Paint. Um, and I've gone for their Mudgley Mustard which is like a yellowy colour, so that's going to be really exciting. And the great thing about their paint is that it's incredibly waterproof, it's formulated to um, be really, really weatherproof, which is perfect in Britain because you know even in the summer we're going to get tons of rain. Um, but the thing that I like most about their paint is that it's really environmentally friendly, so it hardly uses anything that's toxic or anything, and the paint doesn't even smell. So hopefully I won't pass out when I'm painting my shed this time. <laughs> Definitely a bold choice. Hardly smells at all. It's lovely. I do love a fresh tin of paint, but this one is amazing. It hardly smells at all, which is just fantastic. And look at this gorgeous colour. I mean, it's a bold choice, I'll be honest. But I'm not afraid of bold colours. <laughs> like that the shed is finished I'm thrilled with the color it's like a pop of sunshine at the back of the garden even on a grey day thank you so much to Forest Garden for working with me on this project and any questions that you have please leave in the comments below I'll do my best to answer thanks for watching